So let's talk about tech gurus for a moment. Some tech gurus that may come to mind immediately are guys like Bill Gates, Tim Cook, or Jeff Bezos. And I think most tech guru type guys could be described as eccentric and creative, but are often reserved and very private individuals. Well, today we're gonna to be talking about a tech guru who is certainly eccentric, but his life could be described as the complete opposite of reserved and could fit the script for like a Wolf on Wall Street type movie. And in fact, there currently is a movie being based around this guy's life. I'm talking about antivirus pioneer John McAfee. You know John McAfee because of the antivirus software he created which shares his namesake. You also probably remember him from back in 2013 when he created a tongue-in-cheek video making fun of that exact same software for being difficult to uninstall. And hell, maybe you're even aware of his recent 2016 and up-and-coming 2020 presidential run. In recent years, he's amassed somewhat of a niche cult following on the internet because of his libertarian views, eccentric millionaire personality, and no shits given demeanor. But John McAfee hasn't always had this, shall I say, larger than life image associated with his name. McAfee's reputation was forever changed from the antivirus software guy to something much, much more after he was named the person of interest in a murder investigation put forth by the Belizean government. And I gotta say guys, this is one of the crazier stories I've talked about on the channel and you're in for a real doozy. But before we get started, I gotta thank Dashlane for sponsoring today's video. Dashlane is a service that remembers your passwords for you and provides convenient account information autofills across the board. It takes the load of password management off your back. It has credit card autofills as well so you can get through online shopping checkout screens in a flash. In addition to password management, Dashlane works around the clock to keep your accounts protected and will notify you if there's ever any data breach affecting one of your Dashlane linked accounts. Dashlane has drastically sped up my web surfing ability in the past few months and I think you guys will really love it. So check out the link in the description box, that's dashlane.com slash wavywebsurf and that'll let you try Dashlane for free. And the first 200 people to use code wavywebsurf will get 10% off their purchase of Dashlane Premium. So before we get into the Belizean government situation, we really need to start from the beginning of John McAfee's professional career. McAfee has always had what I would call a entrepreneurial spirit. We begin all the way back in the late 60s when he attended Virginia's Roanoke College and during this time he dabbled in drug dealing while earning his bachelor's in mathematics. He's since admitted in interviews that cocaine was his product of choice and learned the fundamentals of supply and demand from that trade. After graduating from college, he would move on from the illegal hustle and started his career in tech. He landed his first job in 1968 as a programmer working for NASA's Institute for Space Studies. From here, he would go on to work at Xerox as an operating system architect and would hold a handful of other programming related jobs over the next decade. It wouldn't be until the late 80s that we would find John McAfee beginning to dip his toes into antivirus software development for the first time. The story goes that in 1987, while working for Lockheed Aerospace, McAfee had one of his computers infected by a computer virus called Brain. This brain virus is considered to be the first virus ever developed to infect Microsoft computers. After his computer was infected, he would use his programming skills to write the code for a prototype version of the McAfee antivirus software. And it took him just a day and a half to write it, and it worked. It was at this point that John had realized that with new computer viruses coming into the fold and the use of PCs by the average consumer rising every day, that there would ultimately be an increasing demand for software to fight them. So later in 1987, he founded his company, McAfee Associates, with the hopes of being one of the first to capitalize on this untapped market. His company would go on to develop a retail version of the McAfee antivirus product, and as you are probably well aware, it was extremely successful. So how did this product become so prevalent? Well, it probably has to do with the fact that throughout the 90s and early 2000s, pretty much every Windows PC you bought came pre-installed with McAfee antivirus, and it was notoriously difficult to uninstall and would serve you with pop-ups every 30 minutes asking you to upgrade your software to a premium version. But anyways, these intrusive practices used to get you to use their software were mostly put into place after McAfee had sold his shares and departed from the company, which he sold his 51% of McAfee in 1994 
for $100 million. After John sold his shares from McAfee, he collected the $100 million and would go forth and buy nine lavish homes across the United States and delve into a good bit of partying. And this is where we begin to see the more eccentric side of John McAfee shine through. He was living a lifestyle akin to a rock star, a lifestyle that had booze, beautiful women, and piles of cash all within arm's reach. But after suffering a heart attack in the late 90s, McAfee would temporarily leave the party life behind and go on some soul searching where he traveled across the United States in a Winnebago. And it was during this time that he took an interest in yoga and would end up starting a yoga school in Colorado, which he hosted at one of his properties in a town called Woodland Park. So let's fast forward to 2009 and we're beginning to get closer to this crazy Belize situation. McAfee is back in full swing into his party lifestyle, and after years of reckless spending coupled with the effects of the 2008 economic recession and being involved in what he describes as numerous frivolous lawsuits, his fortune had reportedly dwindled to just a few million dollars, and he had stopped making payments on his properties. Many of them were foreclosed, and he was forced to sell the others. After selling his Woodland Park Yoga School property at auction, John McAfee made the decision to leave the United States and would purchase a property in Belize, which was an extravagant resort style home located on an island just off the coast. He had the hopes of living in a tropical paradise, coupled with the added bonus of it being more difficult for people to sue him, being that he was outside of the United States. After moving to Belize, the next year would be filled with oceanfront views, yacht joyrides, and scuba diving escapades. He was living the dream. This is where it starts getting kind of weird. Approximately one year after moving to this new island estate, McAfee would curiously purchase another Belizean property in a town called Orange Walk and would promptly move into the small jungle town. On this property, McAfee set up a laboratory with the stated goal of developing plant-based antibiotics. He would become a popular figure in the small jungle town as he would often share his wealth with the townsfolk and gave people jobs at the lab. He would even go as far as to hire locals as armed guards for the facility, as John McAfee's wealth naturally made him a target for robberies. The laboratory operation fell under the suspicion of the Belizean government, as the government felt as though McAfee was using the lab as a drug manufacturing plant. In April of 2012, the government sent a gang suppression unit on a raid of McAfee's Orange Walk Laboratory on suspicion of making meth, but ultimately nothing illegal was found. The raid would instill a sense of paranoia within McAfee, with him believing that the Central American drug cartels were conspiring with the government to get rid of him. Shortly after the raid, McAfee would abandon his laboratory and move back to his island property, but he didn't come alone. He brought his lab security force, some dogs, and a slew of Orange Walk women with him. And with a handful of armed security personnel, a pack of guard dogs, and bikini-clad women on the premises 24-7, McAfee's lavish island resort was beginning to look more like a Pablo Escobar paramilitary compound. And his neighbors took notice of this sudden change of scenery at the McAfee residence. One of these neighbors was American expatriate Greg Fall. Mr. Fall had found issue with the presence of the guard dogs which roamed McAfee's property. Fall would express to a friend privately that he grew tired of the incessant barking coming from McAfee's dogs in the months following McAfee's return to the island estate, and reportedly one day told a friend that if McAfee didn't do anything about his obnoxious dogs, that he was going to poison them. So one night after telling his friend this, a piece of poisoned meat gets thrown over the fence of McAfee's residence, and this piece of poisoned meat would be consumed by the dogs, killing several of them. The following evening after the dog poisoning, an unidentified intruder would sneak into Greg Fall's home and ambushed him with a taser, and then would go on to kill him with a gunshot to the head. At first, police were puzzled by the situation, but after receiving the information that McAfee's dogs were recently killed and had learned from a friend of Fall that Fall had expressed the possibility of him poisoning McAfee's dogs, John McAfee immediately became a person of interest for the murder of Greg Fall. The theory was that McAfee himself or one of his goons had killed Gregory Fall as revenge for the dog poisoning. So the police go to McAfee's home for questioning, but 
John is nowhere to be found. In fact, he was currently in the process of fleeing the country. John McAfee was now one of the most wanted men in the country of Belize and this news story would make international headlines. While John McAfee was on the run, he would make contact with the US media numerous times and would explain that he had nothing to do with the murder and believe that it was another conspiracy set up by the Belizean government to incriminate him. Admittedly, it's a pretty outlandish theory, but nothing's impossible. Eventually, authorities would catch up with John McAfee in the neighboring country of Guatemala. It is thought that his location was revealed after he did a face-to-face -face interview with Vice Media and metadata from photos uploaded from the Vice interview were used to track his location. On December 5th, officials would swarm the Guatemalan hotel he was staying at and were preparing to load him on a plane and ship him back to Belize. But when he was being apprehended, John McAfee, by his own admission, had feigned a heart attack and was sent to the hospital. This would buy him enough time for his lawyer to arrive and file a stay of deportation appeal, which would temporarily hold the deportation process. After his lawyer's intervention, McAfee was placed in detainment at a Guatemalan lockup facility. But this wouldn't last long, because days later on December 12th, after what I could only imagine to be a game of legal twister, McAfee was ultimately loaded up onto a plane and deported, not to Belize, but to Miami, Florida. John McAfee was now back on friendly U.S. soil and had miraculously evaded the arm of the Belizean government. A Belizean investigation into John McAfee would never take place and he still maintains his innocence to this day. The family of Greg Fall felt as though McAfee had gotten away with murder, but without a formal investigation ever taking place, it was impossible to implicate McAfee for the alleged crime. He would remain a free man. After returning to the States, McAfee would move to Portland, Oregon with his now wife Janice Dyson, who he had met the day after he arrived back in the States, and they would move to my home state of Tennessee at a later date. He has since maintained a relatively low profile but sporadically finds himself in the news or trending on social media due to his antics. And in recent years, McAfee has acquired a large following on the internet, mostly due to his eccentric persona, but also because there are many who subscribe to his libertarian ideologies and support of cryptocurrency. In 2016, McAfee ran for president as a libertarian, and he's running again in 2020. The last major update comes from March of this year and really helps to tie this whole story together. Apparently for the last six years, the Fall family estate has filed a total of six lawsuits against McAfee, all of which he has ignored. The main accusation of the lawsuit alleges that following the dog poisoning incident, McAfee arranged for the payment of $5,000 to quote, violent local Belizean man, Eddie McCoy, to quote, subdue, torture, and murder, fall. One of these suits was actually handed down by a Florida state judge and McAfee has since been ordered by the judge to pay $25 million to the fall family estate. But McAfee still maintains his innocence and is yet to pay up. And I think I'll wrap up this story by reading you his public statement regarding the court decision. I have never responded to the fall lawsuit. It was a default judgment. I was never suspected of murder by the Belizean authorities or any other authority. I was never charged with murder by Belizean authorities or any other authority. It was a suit based entirely on media reporting. I have not responded to a single one of my 37 lawsuits for the past 11 years. They have all been frivolous, even though judges are required to decide for the plaintiff if I do not respond. I refuse to play the legal extortion game aimed at America's wealthy class. A total of 200 million has been awarded to plaintiffs against me in that period of time. I have no assets, so I have been unable to pay a single penny to any of them. Why do I default? Because I and my agencies have been sued over 200 times. Strangers I've never met have sought out my properties, immediately tripped and fell, and filed eight lawsuits totaling 17 mil. My most expensive was a wrongful death case involving an airplane piloted by my nephew whom I trained to fly. Plane crash killed my nephew, 22, and a sick old man who wanted to experience an adventure before he died. The suit went on for six years, cost millions in legal fees, and the plaintiffs were rewarded with three million. I had to pay them. Crindler and Crindler, the richest law firm on the planet, was the firm suing me. I had no assets and could not pay to this day. So I no longer bothered to even respond. Why ask friends to pay millions when it doesn't matter what the judgment is? I have no assets, so it's truly a mute point. So guys, that's pretty much the John McAfee story. 
Let me know what you think about this guy because I find him to be a pretty divisive person. I think a pretty good description of his character would be like an anti-hero or a chaotic neutral figure. I don't know. Let me know what you think. But anyways guys, I'll see you on the next video, let me know who you want me to talk about next, and major shout out to my patrons, I appreciate you guys, wavy web surf out, peace.